Hello guys and welcome back to Art Games and Tech. My name is Gilbert Matos and today's tutorial will be focusing on teaching you how to make horizontally moving platforms. So let's take a look at the demo. Alright, so let's get started. The first thing we'll do is create an object. You can name this object whatever you want. Then we need to make this object a child of object jump through platform. After that, we need to add a create event. Inside the create event, we're going to be adding the following variables. PSPD is basically the speed at which the platform is going to be moving. Each move is going to contain both the direction and the speed at which the platform is going to be moving to. Next, we're going to be adding an end step event. Here, we'll add these lines of code, and I'll explain what each line does later. In the first line, we're assigning our horizontal speed based on the direction multiplied by our moving speed. We then create a temporary variable called wall meeting, which checks for collisions on either left or right based on the direction the platform is moving. On the if statement, we simply say, if we are colliding with walls, move left or right. But if we do collide, then change our direction to move in the opposite direction. Next, add your sprite of choice. Now let's go ahead and drop some of our platform objects into the room and run the game to see if our code is working properly. As you can see, our code is working flawlessly, movement-wise. We cannot stick to the platforms just yet, so let's fix that. Let's go back into the end step event and let's add a code folding region. Add the following lines of code and I'll explain what they do next. We first start with a temporary variable to check if the player is on top of said platform. You might be wondering, Gil, uh, why are you using instance place instead of place meeting? Which is a good question. And the reason for that is instance place stores the ID of said object, which we can use to do other checks and I have to worry about checking if the objects exist. And if said object is on top of the platform, we get a two for one line, which is pretty handy and time saving. Remember the player on top variable? Cool. See how we're both checking for the player being on top and at the same time making sure that it exists first? That is the awesome thing about functions that store an ID. We have done two things in one line. The next if statement reads as follows. Make sure that there's an instance of the player that is on top of us. After that, we need to make sure that the player is actually just one pixel above the platform and not clipping. We then run the next code from inside the player. The following if statement is for the player to make sure he's not colliding with walls so that the platform doesn't push him inside the walls. I know this was a bit much, but this will make sure there's no weird behavior in our horizontally moving platform code. Then we simply move the player using the platform speed. Now let's run the game and see our code in action. As you can see, everything is working flawlessly. There's no lagging behind the platform or getting pushed inside the walls. With all that said, I hope you have learned something useful today. And if you did, please leave a like, share the video, hit the bell icon, and subscribe for more. That's all for today, folks, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.